May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Um, a warm hello to everybody who is connecting with us online. I hope you are outside on this near perfect fall day as we have just started the month of September and uh, this time of fall and coming back together in just a week for us here at Mount Olivet. And uh, we've just let Jesus do Jesus thing this summer in these ordinary days and have entrusted uh, the word that comes from the Gospel of Luke. And all I can say is oof for today because we're just not getting this like easy, uh, neatly tied up bow at the end of summer. Uh, Jesus' words um, are really hard to understand and to be honest, not really the message I wanted to hear today. Um, but we will take what we are given and dwell there and entrust that God has something uh, to say to us, a promise to re be received and a call to be embodied for each of us and us as a community. Um, so I'm glad to be with you today. Pastor Kristen has a weekend off and will be coming back to us soon. So I invite us just to name this imperfect sense of what it means to be human. Somehow you came here today trusting um, that you needed the forgiveness that God continues to give to us as God's people. And for things that you have done that you are not feeling great about and things that we have just missed the boat on, that we haven't done all of those things together, God invites us to name those individually and as a community, and then God speaks to us with a word of grace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Love as God loves. Amen. Please stand as you are able. We sing together.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please pray with me. Creating God, we pray for perspective and wisdom as we frantically are pushed to define worth by success, busyness, and new things. Slow us down to see how your presence is here now, creating worth in what we already have been given. Amen. Good morning. Real Al Ribby is sitting out there. <laughs> Today's scripture is from Luke chapter 14, beginning with the 25th verse. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yet even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does, does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether there is enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build who was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can come, become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Bob. You may be seated. God's grace and peace to all of you. Amen. So I remember a business trip I made to Denver back when I worked in mortgage banking. Due to flight delays, we arrived later than anticipated. So our team had to immediately gather in the hotel conference space to get everything uh, set up and planned for the next day. We were rolling out technology updates to all the bankers across the country and I was facilitating the training along with my colleagues, so I would be up front all week. I didn't get back to my hotel room until late, and as I unpacked my suitcase, I quickly realized I had forgotten all my pants. <laughs> it 
In an attempt to be organized, I had laid out all of my pants on the back of the chair and then forgot them there. The jeans I was wearing were the only pants I had. Now this was way before business casual or next day shipping. There were no clothing stores open that late and as a 5'11 person, my inseam was longer than anyone who had traveled with me. It was obvious that well-planned professional business attire meant nothing without the pants. Now, believe me, that week I got so many comments, nice pants, Beth, I haven't seen those before, Beth. And even 25 years later, when I run into old colleagues, they remember this trip and always say, Beth, just remember to pack your pants. Of course, humor is the only coping mechanism when you hear a story like this. Jesus is just so direct as he speaks to those crowds. None of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all of your possessions. And these possessions are not just what you pack in your suitcase or what gets left in your closet, your electric car and Apple TV, but it also includes family and relationships. When Jesus says, hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself. The original word hate doesn't mean like despise. It means detach from. Not really the message that we want to hear on Labor Day when everyone is so curious what this fall will be like. I don't know if you saw the article in the Star Tribune last week about that, how churches are using donuts and llamas and other things to bring people back to church. I think the stat was 27% of people actually worship regularly now on Sunday mornings. The question is, will people even come back? So I'm not sure, Jesus, if this is the message you want to lead with. Hate your family, carry a cross, and give up your possessions, and then you can follow me. Maybe, though, there is some understanding and compassion from Jesus that these crowds just never let up. While Jesus eats with Pharisees and tax collectors alike, the crowds wait in streets and they travel the countryside so desperate to hear from Jesus that there's more to life than what meets the eye. They keep following God in flesh who meets them where we are where they are, the one who will cross boundaries to find people in the margins, offering physical healing and a promise that they matter, even if they have never felt that before. Jesus is inching closer to Jerusalem, where his death will meet him as he carries a cross and lets power have its way. And Jesus knows even then, that the crowds have no clue how far God will go to reveal that love is greater than fear or even death. Jesus, on that day that these words were spoken, sees firsthand how fickle humans really are. We want the faith, but we don't want the commitment. Give us the grace, God, but only when we really need it, only when we run out of wherewithal and innovative options for how we can save and protect ourselves from how fair and hard this life can be. Maybe Jesus was just tired after so many months of encountering this world that God loves so much. You see, even Jesus cannot escape human imperfectness, imperfectionist. Maybe it's helpful to go back to where Jesus is headed, Jerusalem, 
and go back to Good Friday where there are no crowds at the cross. The disciples have denied and fled, and in Luke, even the criminals hang with Jesus derided him. There is not a worldly procession or a human relationship that can keep this death from happening. Jesus is left alone to die. It is finished. And from that place of death, Jesus finds his followers who have fled and denied, and he breathes them back to life. You see, we're not abandoned in our fickle faith and our attachment to things. There is a way ahead, but it takes taking the next step to believe that the ending is actually a beginning and a place of hope. Mount Olivet, we cannot go back to the fall of 2019. The world has changed and we have changed, and some of the ways of church that we have known and loved will not hold for what is needed ahead. Maybe Jesus is telling us to look up from our preoccupation to remind us that we cannot prepare or pack for what's coming around the bend. Because when relationships end, when you are touched by death or crisis, when you don't know where your nourishment will come, physical or spiritual, to sustain one more day, then following and trusting become not an obligation, but a promise. Then we can hear that we are to take this next step and know that God will meet us there, opening up a future and trusting us to speak truth and bear love and form community, and trusting us with this work to go on our way, extend and receive peace. And that is where Jesus will meet us. Now, before we squeeze the last drop of juice from this summer, I invite you to take a walk to the other side of church. Over yonder where we have our labyrinth, there you will find community gardens that began with tiny seeds and flailing sprouts that have slow, slowly produced abundant fresh vegetables to feed neighbors. And along with those community gardens, a small group of people have felt called to plant native plants to encourage bees to pollinate, to bring back the wildness of the land that was home to the Dakota people before Minnesota was even a state. And so these everyday uncertified gardeners dig up buckthorn and they lay donated bricks to form garden beds. And they even have asked anyone for plant clippings to plant alongside each other to restore the land. Now, they could have mustered enough money to hire professionals to make it look perfect, but instead they know that dirt in fingernails reminds them where they come from, and to realize that it takes people working together to pick the weeds, to trust the vision of what will grow beyond what we can imagine to discover the joy in the shared work, and that faith is something that we will grow when we detach enough to dig in and notice. Jesus is right about this. This life of faith is not about perfect family photos, making life as easy as possible, or well-packed suitcases. The faith to follow Jesus is simply a gift, one that is received that we cannot buy or store away. And this faith even comes today in the speaking of this word, in this meal, and it will be given and nurtured in all that lies ahead for us, Mount Olivet a promise to hold in your heart and also in the back pocket 
of whatever pants you are wearing. Amen. Please stand as we sing. As that word of life continues to come, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We trust in that peace as Jesus sends us out into the world, um, that the way forward is uh, something that is within our hearts, both human and divine. And we share that now um, as we share the peace together, whether you're far away online or you're here together at church, it's something that we both extend and receive. And we also collect our offering. Uh, We could do nothing here at Mount Olivet if there was not the funding to let this spirit of God's presence in the world fly. And so um, at the end of the summer, um, a sincere thank you for all the ways that you've invested in who we are here, building and grounds, uh, staff and mission and ministry. That's the future ahead for us at Mount Olivet. And so um, in trust, we know that that will continue abundantly as God leads us forward. So um, to share the peace and collect the offering is what we do right now. And so may the peace of God be with you all. Let's both share and receive peace from each other. And please comment online.
Blake for that offering. We pray together, God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection has opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray now together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, the teacher, is the one who hosts this meal, who understands our fickleness of human desire to keep away from the world with things and relationships. And today he says, come, open your hands and receive the gift not as an obligation, but as a deep promise that God is with us today, tomorrow, and the next day. So we gather once again and hear this invitation, and next week you'll hear it too, that the future ahead is one of hope and one to which we are called. If you are online, hear this promise, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those here at church, gluten-free wafers, wine is red, grape juice is light in color. After you receive the meal, you're invited into a time of prayer where you are, or feel free to come up front as well. Please come forward now. The feast is prepared. Oh, 
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. So uh, we pray. We've been forgiven. We've heard uh, Jesus speak and teach and receive this grace that comes through that word in this meal. And now what do we want to say to God about all of this and entrust um, really since the beginning of time that God has heard the cries of God's people and um, that divine presence is within this world and for us to have faith to believe it's true. And oftentimes when you speak something, it allows us as your community uh, to get to know you a little bit more, to connect with what's going on in your life and quite possibly we have something to offer, whether that is compassion, a reminder that you are not alone, or maybe it's something, an experience or a gift that we can give in this moment. And that is God showing up as well. So with all those things swirling, I'll start us off as we pray. And then I look to you first here at church, just simply raise your hand or online, uh, type your comments um, and we will pray together. So let's pray. God, uh, for this teaching of faith, we just never master this. We need to be reminded it's, it's not the polishedness of uh, 
being up front, showing that we have it all together, but the realness of what it means to be human and vulnerable. And that's why you came into this world um, to remind your people that we can't save ourselves, uh, that actually you love that much and love that closely to accompany us in this life and entrust us um, to be disciples, to follow you, um, to embody what justice means, uh, to bring light into darkness, to bring love, to come to very close places. And so, God, um, over this last summer, for all the ways um, that you remind us in basic, basic ways uh, that your future continues to grow as we embark on a new program year that's just a week away. Um, God, for all that's known and all that's unknown, that you are there. So for this gift that we have to worship online and in, on person, we pray for our neighbors and our community, people who haven't been back to church for a long time, that they will feel invited, that they will feel nudged, and not find close quarters, but an openness of community and eagerness to be about where you call us to be in the world. And now hear the prayers of your people, God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. What prayers do you have today? Yeah, Barb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll just scoop all of that up. Um, for the beginning of the school year, um, you said not to have kids drive teachers crazy. <laughs> Yes, Uh, whether they be young ones, let's not forget middle school um, and high school and all all the mix. Uh, For kids, um, going from a more relaxed schedule to more structure, um, which has its place, Um, pray that everyone will have someone to sit with at lunch uh, for administration, for staffing shortages, for the demands of what it means um, in a community community. to invest in educating kids for this world, for all the things that need to be taught in the curriculum, and then for the humanness of loving people and kids as they are, for building of communities, um, and for all the different ways that we express it. Help us be a community. Um, It's going to be a tough week this week, so come back next week with just grace and patience and love. And pray for your granddaughter, too, as she begins a new school, I think, too. God, in your mercy. I have some prayers to add. Last Sunday, we prayed for Rindy Erdman's mom, Shirley Watermiller, who had shockingly begun the end of her earthly life. And just a few hours after worship, um, entered heaven, and so that funeral was held in Belmont, Iowa this last week, and we pray for Rindy and her siblings and her entire family, Um, grief and shock, Um, just sorting all of that out for a time to come together to proclaim that God's love is even greater in death than for all the ways that surely live that in faith. And for Rindy and her siblings now as this next generation of elders in this world, uh, for us to be mindful of all the grief that we carry, even when we can't see it from the outside. Uh, God, we pray for Rindy. Thank you for Shirley's life, her faith and love. God, in your mercy. Also, John Ruha, who usually sits right here, um, was unexpectedly in ICU. I'm not sure if he is out of the hospital yet. Uh, but for healing that has come and healing that will continue for John to restore him to health so he can come and find us back here at church. We pray for healing for John. God, in your mercy. And Al, for you, um, 
uh, even with your sling, for a little bit of rubber in you that just bounced back, uh, for friends like Bob who can stand up and speak for you, um, and for gentle care as you recover for your body and your spirit, God in your mercy. And just want to pray on this Labor Day weekend, um, meant to give rest. There's a lot of people who don't get the day off tomorrow um, for the inequities and um, overworking and underworking and fair wages and um, how we all need Sabbath rest. Um, on Sundays or whatever day that falls, uh, but also for other days to uh, recoup and to refuel and to be mindful of, of all of that, we pray. God, in your mercy. And Anne, um, please pray for my dad, Kurt, after, oh my goodness, Anne, emergency surgery Friday evening after he experienced severe abdominal pain, uh, a, Perforation was found in his small intestines due to a small tumor, and the tumor was removed. And we're now waiting for more answers as he continues to heal. Um, so I'm looking in the back of the room where Kurt usually sits with Anne and George. Anne, um, doesn't feel fair uh, that your dad is again in doctor's care um, after uh, his many recoveries over this last year, but for the gentleness of healing to continue to come for you to trust in faith uh, that those prayers are heard by God and by your church community. And we send our love, and please extend that to your dad, too. Tell him we miss him and look forward to seeing him back. And in the meantime, just the peace and the gentleness that comes to him. God, in your mercy. God, for all these things that uh, we pray today, um, for this presence um, that comes. Help us notice it in this time, too. Even the things that are quiet and small are reminders um, of what is ahead for us. Amen. And I will pass announcements on to my colleague, Joy. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. The first is that faith formation registration is open online so please uh, check that out programming begins at age four and goes through 12th grade um, and so you can figure out how to register on the homepage uh, mopley.org um, <clears throat> there are also we are also looking for guides especially fifth grade and wednesday night faith explorers programming begins next week on sunday and then the following wednesday the 14th um, so if you'd like more information um, both Pace and Rich are here. I don't know. Oh, there's Rich. Okay. So you can ask them because they know all the details. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if you all remember, last spring we had a, uh, we spent time in worship talking about what we missed the most, um, having gone through the pandemic and being separated and, and not able to see each other. And um, by far, what we missed the most was connection and and being together. So we're going to spend some time this fall um, under the blanket theme of connect and be known um, and get all kinds of opportunities to reestablish those connections or establish new connections with new folks um, and uh, spend time in, in uh, Bible stories that will, will help us foster those connections also. So it's, it's, um, it'll be a little different than we might be used to, but I think um, the time that we will spend together in worship will be really um, exciting and um, connecting. <laughs> and so please, um, either online or here, plan to be here next Sunday as we kick off our, our fall um, Connect and Be Known season. Thank you. As we sing.
the God of peace, creator, savior, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Go in peace and love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.